What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and yet another video. If you haven't noticed based on the title and thumbnail of this video, there is a very large addition to the channel. This is my 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. So if you guys are new to the channel, I'm a whitewater kayaker by heart. I've been paddling since about eight years old. I started at eight up on the new river in an inflatable ducky, then moved on at age 12 paddling my first boat being a dagger axiom and everything kind of took off from there. So by no means is this going to replace that. I'm still a kayaker. I still love it to death. However, this I see as a tool to get me to the river, uh, both the harder to reach class five areas, uh, class five driving rather that is, as well as offer me an option for car camping uh, for when hotels aren't really an option, or I simply just don't wanna spend the money on hotels. So I am aware this is the fourth one in Western North Carolina of the Wilderness Edition. So I do wanna take the rest of this video, go ahead and break down, uh, ground up how this vehicle was spec'd out, give you guys all the details of what I opted for and what I think about it. So this vehicle does come stock from the factory with an engine skid plate. I did go for the optional transmission skid plate in the rear as well. Next up would be the splash guards. I went with splash guards over mud flaps. Mud flaps would offer more coverage as well as flexibility if I were to clip one on a rock. However, the dealership that I went through did not have mud flaps as an option. I could switch them in the future, but I went ahead and went with these straight from the dealership to begin with. After splash guards, another critical thing is I like to mountain bike on the side. So I went ahead, went with the trailer hitch pre-installed from Subaru, as well as the Kuat NV2. Haven't gotten to use it yet. I actually dislocated my shoulder about four days ago. So um, waiting on that one, but I figured I'd go ahead and throw it on the car, show you guys how it looked. This is the one with the trail dock, trail stand uh, built into it as well. Hopefully won't need that, but uh, it's there if I need it. And uh, it's gonna be sweet to uh, get out and ride with this thing. So this car also comes from the factory with all weather mats in the back seat and the front seat, as well as the trunk liner. However, what I went ahead and added is I wanted to do the seat back protectors as well as the sidewall protectors. That way the entire trunk is completely waterproof, protected. Uh, if I'm throwing paddles, gear, anything like that, in and out of this, snowboards even, uh, I'm not digging edges uh, into the fabric, tearing the inside of the trunk. Now, last but not least for the exterior bits is the roof rack. Now there's been a huge talk about this roof rack system uh, as this factory rail rather as different from the original Outback and the current Outback rather for the Wilderness Edition and that this can hold up to 700 pounds. Now it's 220 dynamic load, but the problem is is if you buy the extended aero bars from Subaru pre-installed, you get the Crossroads foot pack. Now the problem with the Crossroads foot pack, they're great, but they're only rated to 165 pounds, which means you're not able to utilize the raised rail max capacity when loading this thing down. So what I went ahead and tested and I hoped and prayed would work is that this is the Evo raised rail foot pack. Uh, it's a clamping system rather than a strap that you tighten down. It's the system that was used on, I guess, like the 2016 Outbacks, um, as well as the Forester and the Crosser, or the Crosstrack. Blech. Sorry about that. Um, but it does fit. It fits perfectly, rather. Uh, it seems like this rail, although it's a different material uh, than normal, I think it's some sort of steel, but... Um, it's the same shape as the normal raised rails. However, it's thicker here. Uh, that's where that strength is coming from. However, the clamping system does fit. That is the Evo raised rail foot pack from Thule. Uh, and that has a weight rating of 220 pounds as opposed to the 165 on the crossroads. Now, lastly, this brings us to the interior of the vehicle. Uh, I did go with the sunroof package. I think that'll be sweet for uh, stealth camping. I don't have to have windows rolled down, anything like that and get a mesh bent to put over the top and uh, nobody will have any idea that I'm in here. Uh, that being said, with the reverse automatic braking package, uh, if you have a bike rack, um, turn reverse automatic braking off because uh, that's a very rude awakening if you manage to put this thing in reverse and it thinks somebody's behind you. I will say with that, it's super straightforward. There's a button here, it says reverse automatic braking. 
press and hold it and uh, it turns it back on, press and hold it and it turns it back off. There we go, now it's off. So uh, if you do get that package, the reverse automatic braking comes with the sunroof. So you get them together, just make sure to turn that off if you do have a bike or a bike rack on the back of the car. Uh, given my blown out shoulder, there's probably gonna be a bunch of weird adventures that aren't specifically kayaking related, but have more to do with this vehicle, getting it ready for the kayaking season once my shoulder's better. If you have any questions while I'm working out my own learnings of this vehicle, be sure to drop me a comment. I'll be sure to get back to you. Other than that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please be sure to do so. Uh, you don't wanna miss what I have in store for this thing. But with that, I'll let you guys go and I'll see you in the next one.